So I'm here at the Compton Organ at St Albans Hoban, which is going to have a big restoration this year. Now when people talk about this organ, um, and they do talk about it, uh, the only adjective that ever comes up is uh, loud. And they say, well, this organ is very loud. And it is, I can't deny it. Um, but it was not, uh, it was not d deliberately made that way in some sort of exercise in one-upmanship. Um, what happened, uh, as I say, that the, the old organ was the Father Willis that sat down there, uh, and that, along with most of the church, uh, was destroyed in an air raid in the war. So the church was, was coming to be rebuilt and, of course, needed a new organ. And Compton's, uh, we'll come to the commissioning of it, but Compton's were chosen to build this new organ. And uh, unfortunately for them, um, there was a very inflexible deadline. I mean, we all need deadlines, but, but the, there was a reconsecration service uh, attended by various, various bigwigs, um, and the organ had to be finished by that date. There was no flexibility whatsoever. Uh, and unfortunately, when, when the organ was being built, when they, were being, when they were voicing it, which is a process whereby an organ is tailored to the building it sits in, um, that the church was still full of scaffolding, that the rebuilding, the finishing touches were still going ahead. Um, now this had the effect of sort of deadening the acoustic. Um, so I think Compton saw, sort of saw this big space with a sort of unfriendly acoustic, said, well, we need to make this instrument powerful, otherwise it's just not gonna fill this, this space. So that's what they did. They, they made the instrument very loud. Uh, and then of course the scaffolding came down and uh, you know, they, they, they realized their misjudgments. Apparently the opening recital, uh, the first piece that was played was the list BACH. So someone put down, the, the, I think it's Arnold Richardson played, the, the B flat pedal on full organ and people leapt out of their seats because it was deafening. So soon after that they put uh, boards around the great organ to quieten it down a bit because they sort of realized they'd made a bit of an error of judgment. But there is a lot more to this organ than just uh, decibels. It's, uh, I've been, I say I've been playing for a very long time and, it, and it, it's, it's incredibly successful at playing anything. Uh, most things will, will sound really very, very good on it. Uh, and we're blessed, of course, with a fantastic acoustic here, which helps. Um, 1961, which was the date this organ was completed, is an interesting date uh, in British organ building terms. Um, in the post-war period, uh, not just in organs, in music generally, um, there was what's become known as the early music revival, where people started looking at uh, period instruments, the sounds and the forces that Bach and Handel would have used, and what their music would have sounded like, and, and, and all this kind of thing. And the organ was not immune from this. Um, you know, Baroque repertoire forms a large part of, of what we do. So they looked at the English organs with its big, boomy open woods and its fat tubby diapason tone and they thought well this is not ideal for playing Bach's music on it this is not the kind of instrument he would have heard um, so uh, a lot of instruments were in this post-war period sort of baroquified to try and make them more successful uh, at playing this kind of repertoire um, I won't open the can of worms as whether I think it's a good or a bad idea um, but it happened and there we go um, but in organ terms perhaps the most significant date in this movement was in the mid 50s with the building just over the river here of the Royal Festival Hall organ which was the first organ really that, that um, was of cathedral size it's a very large instrument um, but it was built entirely on neoclassical lines so it, it's a Rafe Downs that, that was uh, responsible for that um, uh, sort of showed that this could be done so uh, this really sort of kick-started this trend in English organ building. So here we are a few years later with a new organ to be built. So it, it could have gone down that road quite easily, but it didn't. Uh, the consultant for this project was Arnold Richardson, and he had been organist here in the pre-war period, just the late 30s, early 40s. And he would have been very familiar with Compton's work because he was also organist at Wolverhampton Civic Hall, uh, which had a large Compton in it until very recently, when it unfortunately was rather recklessly destroyed. Um, so he was familiar with that, but he was also one of the organists that played at the inauguration of the Festival Hall organ. So he was familiar with this new trend of neoclassical organ building. So he had a foot in both camps. So he, he was well placed to make a decision about what we needed. Uh, but as I say, he had been organist here in the 30s, and we've always been blessed with a very strong musical tradition here. So I think he knew that we needed an organ that wasn't just a neoclassical thing, but that suited for Bach, but not much else. Um, and so we have this wonderful eclectic organ. Now, 
no one in their right mind would say this is a neoclassical organ. It certainly isn't. But there are little touches that I think are, are sort of a gentle nod to that thing. So if, if, we looked on the, if we look on the choir organ, which makes no attempts to be a positive, we do have a Nazard and a Tierce. So we can make a very classical Bach chorale prelude noise with a sort of sesquialtera. <laughs> a very nice corne. So we have those sounds available, and if you looked at your average English organ from the late 19th century, you probably wouldn't find those sounds at all. So again, we, we, we've got that classical uh, style there. But perhaps uh, this is getting a bit uh, anoraki now. Um, if, if we look at the mixtures, so the great mixture, so, so a mixture for the uninitiated, as the name implies, plays more than one note at once. You see, this is the great one. So it's a mixture of unisons and fifths. Now, what happens generally in mixtures is that they will, what's called break, so the pitches will repeat, otherwise you end up with very high pitch noises at the top of the keyboard. So if I play up the scale, you, hopefully you will hear when, when the pitch will repeat. There, there. So you'll hear that the peach breaks or repeats back. Now, we come to look at the swell mixture. Now, this is uh, often commented on for people that visit this organ. So, you'll hear that for a start. So, it's got a third in it. So, it's a tierce mixture, perhaps a nod to Father Willis. But it's a tierce mixture. But if I play up the compass, you'll hear it doesn't really break. It's sort of, there's a little mini break there, but it goes right up. You see, so it's very high pitched at the top. Now, I don't know what what the re rationale for this was. I wasn't present, but I, I'm speculating. But I think it might have been an attempt to create a sort of pseudo positive effect. If I draw out the sort of great to mixture chorus. <laughs> Sort of is quite effective at creating a sort of pseudo brock positive effect. So I don't know whether that was the reason why that mixture is how it is. But as you see, we have these classical sounds or a, good, a very good imitation of them available on this organ, as well as I mean, if I pull out all the all three diapasons here. sounds like that on a neoclassical instrument and that, that underpinning really gives this away as a, as a romantic organ. But as I say, I've been playing this organ for a very long time and it will do anything, which I think is testament to, to its quality and its, its, uh, its craftsmanship and, and the wonderful job that Compton's did. So as I say, this, this is, uh, I'll come to it later, this was their last organ, so I think it's a rather nice swan song. This organ, in organ terms, doesn't really have any great age to it. It's only just over 60 years old. But it is of historical uh, interest and significance because it was the last organ to be built by the John Compton Organ Company. The company went into receivership a few years after this organ was completed. The John Compton Organ Company really flourished in the period the, sort of between the wars, the 20s and 30s, uh, and they're unique in British organ building, you know, they, they, they were the only company to build both straight classical organs such as this one for church and concert use, but they also built cinema and theatre organs, so they were embracing the new sort of silent movies that were coming into play. And uh, there are still many Comptons scattered around, perhaps the most famous one just down the road from here at the Odeon Leicester Square, this ginormous Compton organ known affectionately as the Duchess. For me, John Compton was kind of the right man at the right place at the wrong time. As I say, the company really flourished in the 20s and 30s, but by that time, the big flowering of English organ building had kind of already happened. Uh, if we think in 1851, Henry Willis exhibited his organ, which is now at Winchester Cathedral, and that really kick-started this great surge in English building uh, of, of organs. So by the time John Compton arrived on the scene, as I say, in the 20s and 30s, um, most prestige projects had already been done. 
most big cathedrals have their Willises, they have their Harrisons, they have their Hills. They, they were not going to turn to John Compton and say, will you build us a new organ? So he, the fact that he managed to carve out the reputation he did is, is testament to, to his skill. And as I say, this organ, um, though it, as uh, uh, I will explain in a minute, it does bear some uh, Compton traits. It really is a sort of very fine example of organ building and considering its date, which we'll also look at a little, uh, a little later, as well as being the last uh, instrument built by Comptons, you can regard it as the end of an era of English organ building, really, in the Romantic style. If you mention the name of John Compton to any organist, the word that will immediately pop into their head is extension organs. Well, what does this mean? Well, in conventional organ building, um, so the, the, the manual compass here is five octaves, 61 notes C to C. So for each stop, excluding the mixtures, you would have 61 pipes, corresponding one pipe for each note. Now, organ uh, tone is built up with a variety of pitches. So you have eight foot, which is concert pitch. You have four foot, which is uh, an octave above that. Two foot, a further octave above that, and 16 foot uh, on the manuals, which are uh, an octave below that. So we're building up layers of sound. So if I wanted to build a nice diapason chorus with conventional methods, I would have 16, eight, four, and two. So that's four stops for 61 notes. So 61 times four, that would take me 244 pipes. Now, John Compton came along and said, well, hang on. So if I've got the eight foot here, uh, I can just add more pipes on the top and more pipes on the bottom to create the result. So if I demonstrate, so the extended rank we have on the grate, and there is only one on the grate, is the third diapason rank. So if I play middle C, sounds like that. Now, if I draw the four foot and play an octave lower, you see it's exactly the same pipe. If I play the two foot, two octaves below, it's the same pipe. And if I play the 16 foot, an octave higher, it's the same pipe. So what Compton did, he would take the 61 notes of the eight foot and he would extend that. He'd say, well, rather than building another 61 pipes for a four foot, I'll use the pipes that I've already got, transpose it up electronically, uh, and add 12 pipes for another octave on the top for a four foot stop. And I would do the same with a two foot, add another 12 pipes on the top, and I would build another 12 pipes on the bottom to create a 16 foot. So if my maths is correct, instead of using 244 pipes with conventional methods, he would use for 16, eight, four, and two with the extension method, it would require 61 pipes plus 97. So uh, plus 36, which gives a total of 97. That's not my strong point, I'm afraid. So uh, you can see the appeal, it's less than half the number of pipes required are using conventional methods. So that has the effect, of course, of uh, not taking up so much space and not costing so much money. So uh, you can see the appeal that churches would you know, get more bang for their buck if they were building a new organ. They would get some very extravagant specifications with very economical space and cost. But is this, is this the way to go? Sometimes John Compton's instruments are, de are derided for this, and the, and the purists will say, well, this is not the art of organ building, this is not what it should be. But the advantage of it is that you get a nice tonal blend. So if I, if I draw out the 16, 8, 4, and 2 on that extended right and play them all together, you have a very blended sound. Now that's all very good, but some people will say, well, this is not organ building. We, we've got this blended sound, but we've lost character. We don't have character of individual stops coming together to create a whole, and perhaps they're right. The other disadvantage that it does have, so if I play a nice fat chord like this, again, I hope my maths is correct. With conventional organs, if I did that on 16, eight, four, and two, um, you would have 28 pipes sounding, but uh, on extension, I think, You'd only, you only have 16 pipes sounding, so it's not quite the same effect. But if uh, any purists playing this organ uh, are going to recoil at the horror of using extended rank, we do have the luxury here of a completely independent uh, chorus, if you, if you wish it. So we can use a 16-foot from the extended rank, but we have a second diapason 
uh, and another four foot and another two foot that are all completely independent. So uh, you can mix and match to create your diapason chorus at will. Um, we also have uh, on the choir, there's one extended rank. There's only one extended rank per manual here. We have the Dulciana, which is the same, 16, 8, 4, and 2, but it also creates the mixture on the top. So even more space saved with that. So with this extension principle, um, you might have the impression that John Compton was some uh, cowboy organ builder doing things on the cheap, cutting corners. Um, but nothing could be further from the truth, really. He was, uh, above all, an, an innovator uh, and uh, a free thinker, and he wanted to push uh, organ building and explore possibilities rather than just trying to do things uh, on the cheap. And, and his organs were uh, top quality machines. Uh, the fact that this organ has lasted so well, actually, it wears its 60 plus years of service quite lightly. Um, the last time it was given uh, some proper TLC was in 1990. Um, but I can honestly say in, until the last few years, it, it, it's incredibly reliable, never ciphers, you know, no, nothing really goes wrong with it, which is testament to the quality uh, job that Compton's did and the quality of materials they used. Um, the, these were not um, cut price uh, organs. But a major restoration is now necessary. Um, but uh, why, I hear you say, because the, the, the congregation might well think, well, why do we need this restoration? It sounds all right to me. And it, generally, it, it does. Um, because, you know, if, if, you're, if I'm playing hymns or some volunteers, generally I'm, I'm using ensembles, I'm using I'm combinations of stops, so you don't, uh, the, the cracks kind of get papered over. But for the last few years, um, it, it has been deteriorating. If I show you the problem, if I draw the, the, the number one diapason, and if I play uh, a chromatic scale in, in these sort of middle two octaves here, you will see just how many notes are missing. So from the top, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, In terms of sort of 24 pipes, we've got eight missing. So there's a third, a third of the notes are missing on that stop. And uh, the, you know, it's not that the, the pipes are all there; they're all up there, they're uh, perfectly fine. Um, but the, it's it's what's what's failing is the, the action after 60 plus years, um, all the 1960s wiring and stuff has, has come to the end of its useful life, and things are wearing out. Um, and there, there are numerous notes uh, missing. The, the the great trumpet also also has quite a few. So I'm just playing a note at random there, that G, that's gone. Yeah, that one's gone. That one's gone, that one's gone. So, uh, you know, it seems that every few weeks another node disappears. So we, we have to kind of stem this flood of things failing and, and put it back uh, to how it, how it should be so everything's functioning. Um, other problems that we have, um, you can see uh, these Compton style things here. We have classical draw stops for the most part, but, but again, these Compton light things. So I don't know if you, you can see these. If I press this couple, you see a light comes on to tell me that that's working. Now that's quite a pedal. We don't use that too often. But this one, the one next to it, is great to pedal. Now if I press it, you'll see nothing happens. Uh, no light comes on. Now the stop is working, great to pedal is functioning, uh, and it's not just a case of replacing a bulb. Unfortunately, the mechanism that tells the bulb to come on is, is gone. So unfortunately, you've got no way of knowing uh, whether great to pedal is on or off at the minute, which is dangerous. And the same swell pedal, you see, that one's gone. Um, so that needs addressing. Also, if I if I play a little, um, you're going to hear how noisy the pedal board is. So that really does need uh, replacing. Um, we also need the, the, the piston system. We, we've only got four generals here, which is not really enough for an instrument of this size and for what it's required to do. So basically, we're going to replace the action uh, with solid state uh, to effectively computerize it, uh, which will mean we, we can have more, far more generals, uh, more flexibility and more reliability uh, to, to, to make sure that this organ will, will be fully functioning. Uh, and you'll also see when I take you inside uh, the amount of just filth 
that's everywhere. The, the, everything is covered in dust, which really does impede the function of the instrument, and there are air leaks and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, so all this needs to be really done to, to make sure this organ will continue uh, to, to give good service. Um, and uh, yes, that's kind of it. We're, we're not, uh, you know, I've been playing this organ for well over 25 years now, and uh, I can honestly say with my hand on my heart that it will play anything incredibly convincingly. So I've seen no reason to make any tonal changes. Nothing will be taken away. Um, there will be some additions, very, very modest additions. So on the pedal, I'll, I'll, you'll see when I talk about it, we're going to extend, we're going to add a little four-foot principle. Um, we're also, now, another Compton innovation, you'll see it in the pedal chamber, uh, is the polyphone. Now, normally on these organ-type videos, you, people will say, well, make sure you've got good speakers, otherwise you won't hear this because it's very low. So if I play the bottom octave of the polyphone, I mean, I'm sure you won't hear that, but the problem is, even with the best speakers in the world, you won't hear it because the problem is it, it doesn't really make much noise uh, in the church or at the console, so we're going to try and sort that out. Um, we're also going to try and rig up uh, another Compton in innovation, the harmonics of 32. So that, those are the only changes uh, we're going to make. Everything else will be left as is, and just brought up to standard, cleaned, and... Uh, uh, hopefully it'll give another 60 years of, of decent service. So I'm now standing uh, amidst this forest of pipes up here in the highest part of the organ, which is a swell box, uh, which you can't really see from the church unless you stand in the right place. Um, but if I pop my phone through the shutters there, you can just see the console and the floor a long way away underneath that. Um, so these shutters, uh, it's called the swell because I can open and close these shutters which will make the sound of these pipes louder or quieter in the church. Um, I can also pop my phone through the shutters a little bit, there we go, and you can just see the pipes of the great case in the middle, which you can through the church, and you can just about see um, the pipes of the big pedal reeds, the, that's the off-pedal ophiclide and the, the great double trumpet popping up over the top. Now. We're not making any tonal alterations to the swell organ, but if I put my phone closer to the pipes here, you will notice the biggest problem that we have, and that is there is a big fat layer of dust over everything. Um, I can't speak to everyone's housekeeping standards, but this organ has not been cleaned for 30 years, so there's 30 years worth of dust and other debris that needs to be cleared away, because the dust is not just on these uh, wooden things that you can see here. It gets into the pipes, it gets everywhere, of course, and that is not good. So these pipes will be taken out and everything will be given a thorough cleaning uh, so, so it'll sound much better without so much dirt in the way. Um, we can see the various pipes of the swell here. Those are the big, that's the 16 foot reed, the contraposauna there. We've got the solitional unit, which I mentioned before. That's, that's, that goes up all the way. There's the, and they're the big pipes that go round the back there. You can just about see. Uh, we have the aforementioned swell mixture is here, as these pipes here. And as you can see, no break point in these mixture pipes. We also have some of the flu, flu work over here. But as I say, we're not making any tonal alterations to this department. It will be left exactly as it is, but it will be given a good clean. The pipes will be looked at and repaired where necessary, and then put back in as good as new condition. So I'm now standing one floor below the swell box, I mean the choir box. So again, we have the shutters here, which I can open and close to make the pipes in this division seem quieter or louder in the church. And just for context, so you can see where I am, uh, there's the pipes of the great case in the middle and there's the console down there. So we're, we're sort of one floor lower down. But like the swell, as you can see, there's big layer of dust over everything. So again, not 30 years, not being given a good sweep. So it needs cleaning, the pipes will be taken out, cleaned, everything put back as good as new. Um, now, as I've said, the, the, the organ was not quite uh, it's, it's now not quite in the same state that Compton's left it in in 1968. There were a couple of changes made soon after it was put in. Uh, one of which we can see here, these pipes here, this one, 
uh, is, the, is the bottom of the clarinet, the choir clarinet, which replaced uh, an orchestral oboe. So a clarinet much more useful to have as a solo reed than an orchestral oboe, really. We have an oboe on the swell, um, but uh, so this, the clarinet replaced that. And the other alterations, so we can look past, these are the fat pipes of the harmonic flute. Lovely sound that makes. Um, now, these pipes here, with the, with the top on, this was apparently the, the great open flute. So the, the, these pipes used to be on the great, they're now on the choir, but it was an open flute. So these pipes would have been twice the size, um, but uh, the decision was made to, to uh, take those pipes, chop them in half, um, and uh, stop them, as you can see, they're not open at the top, they're covered. Um, so that became the choir gadet. So we can see, see the pipes of the choir. Here, here's the Dulciana, the, the Compton extension unit. So we have the Dulciana all the way from the 16 foot pipes there. And it goes all the way around to the little teeny teeny top pipes of the two foot there, which also forms the choir mixture, the acuter as well. So this is the choir organ. Again, we're leaving it as it is, uh, just, just cleaning it and putting it back good as new. I also don't know if you can hear that on my, on my phone. There is a hiss of air coming, which means there's a leak somewhere. There's probably a leaky reservoir. And again, these need to be patched up because an organ leaking air is not a good thing. So these need to be looked at and replaced. This uh, thing here on the wall, I think, is the uh, Compton switching system, which again has come to the end of its useful life. Um, this is what's causing the, the sort of notes to fail and, and things to play up much more than they should. So, so this will be, it, 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 we've been told we have to leave it here. Um, so we will leave it here, but it will be replaced with an up-to-date solid state computerized system to make the organ more flexible and more reliable. So this is now the lower floor of the grate, which is the part you can see from the church. Um, uh, so the, the pipes of the grate are on two floors. This is the lower floor, where generally the, the, the sort of quieter stuff is, the, the, the louder the reeds and stuff are upstairs. Um, but again, you can get really up close here. Look, you can see how much dust uh, is over everything. So again, that will really need to be cleaned. Um, now, I mentioned uh, the choir organ that the, the great flute was chopped in half and put on the choir, and it was replaced by the wooden pipes there with stop diapase, and we don't know where it came from, but it was, uh, there it is, it was put on uh, to replace the one that was chopped in half and put on the choir. And you can just about see the last row of pipes there is the, uh, the mixture. Um, and you can see, I don't know if you can see, but it's actually a row of five pipes. It says it's a three rank mixture on the stop uh, head of the console, but it is actually a five rank mixture. And also, again, I don't know if you can hear, it's more apparent here, there's a big hiss. There's air leaking somewhere. The reservoirs need patching up. Um, so again, this again, no tonal, tonal alterations here, just cleaning, taking things out uh, and cleaning things up and uh, making it function. You can also see at the front here, this wooden board that was put on the organ just soon after it was built to quieten it down a bit because it was deafeningly loud. So I'm now standing at the top of the great organ, the second floor. So we're behind the pipes of the big open metal, which are the pipes you can see from the church. Um, this is the tuba pipes here at the front. Um, officially, the tuba is on the choir, um, but is actually placed here in the great case, so it's unenclosed. And we have the other great reeds here and here, and the pipes uh, that don't bend over are the open number one, um, the one I played earlier with all the notes missing. But as you can see, all the pipes are there, so it's just really the mechanism that's gone, which is why they're not sounding. And these big pipes at the back are the great double trumpet and the ophiclide, which is an extension of the tuba. Um, I will try and uh, show you, but I don't think you can get a good view. If I sneak my throne, here we go, yes, through the front pipes, you can just about make out, there we go. You can see the church, the high altar there with a fantastic mural behind. So that's where we are just for a viewpoint that you don't really see very often. And as you can see up here, it's the same story. Dust, dust, everywhere, dust, dust. I mean, these pipes are absolutely filthy, look at them. So they, they will need cleaning 
and uh, taking out and, and uh, again dust everywhere and also yes you can hear the hiss um, I found out where it was just underneath here is the reservoir uh, that feeds the air to these pipes and there, there is a big hole in it that we've tried to patch up as best we can but it just needs re-leathering really um, it, it just needs replacing and looking at but there we are here's here's the top floor of the grate So here we are in the pedal chamber, the last chamber I'll show you. Again, you only have to, at a glance, you can see the dust that's covering everything. Now, it's, it's, it's a bit strange here because you can see down there is the floor, but all the pipe work sits on a structure a few feet above it. So that ladder goes down there and we'll, we'll be down there in a minute. But, so I'll show you what I'll say. So these are the largest pipes in the organ. These are the pipes of the open wood that go up, up the way there. They're the 16 footers. But you can see the big gap there where some pipe should be. Now, what happened in 1990, if I look around, so here, here are the pedal board on, that's the open wood, that's the extension of eight and four, the board on, and there's the mixture, the pedal mixture there. Now, apart from those mixture pipes, you have this and you have this and you have this, and you notice that all the pipes are made of wood. So what this gap was, that the, the open wood used to go up to eight foot, there was an eight foot. So those pipes were taken out and they were replaced by this. So this is the eight foot octave, which was added in 1990. Uh, it sits at the front of the case, you see that there, there's the exit to the case there. And these were put in in 1990 with the, the aim to sort of bring a bit of metal pipe work, because met, metal pipes sound a bit brighter than their uh, wooden counterparts, to, to bring a bit of clarity to the pedal section which has uh, been largely successful, I think. But those open wood, octave wood pipes there were taken out and replaced with a new eight-foot principle there. Now, if, if you're in the know, you would have no doubt whatsoever that this is a John Compton pedal department. Because, as you can see, this is a 16-foot open wood, and you say, well, why is there a 32? Because there is, as you can see, plenty of room up there to fit one in. But he rarely did that. But what we have here, this thing here, this is the mouth, of what's called a polyphone. Now, if you can see it clearly, it goes all the way back there. So, so you have, let's see this, uh, we'll, see, we'll, we'll hear it in a minute. So you have this box on top, and in this box are various chambers. So this pipe actually plays several different notes. And what it does, it, it acts as a sort of the bottom of a subboard on stop 16 foot pipe. And th those chambers there, uh, when you play a note, each one will open to shorten or lengthen the pipe. So it's a very clever idea. It saves a lot of space and a lot of money. Um, it only goes down to bottom E, the theory being that at such a low pitch, the human ear can't really discern whether you're playing an E or a D sharp or a D or a D sharp or a C or anything like that. So it just repeats the E at the bottom. But there you have it. So John Compton, you know, a space-saving, ingenious way of providing the bottom octave of 32 foot. But, again, the next octave up on, on that extended rank is the board on, which we have here, these pipes here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I hear you say, well, that's not an octave. You need 12 for an octave. But you'll see this little tube on the pipes here. So each of these pipes plays two notes. So if you play two at once, it will favor the lower one. But so this pipe here is C and C sharp, D and D sharp, E and F. F sharp and G, G sharp and A, A sharp and B. So this is typical of John Compton, you see. So instead of having, so you'd have 12 stop, stop, uh, subboard on stopped pipes for this and 12 for the board on, for the bottom two octaves of the 32 foot subboard on stop, we have one, two, three, four, five, seven pipes where normally you would need 24. So he's saved a lot of space and a lot of money. So, but this polyphone, the pedal department is where we, we're making the most changes, or in fact the only changes really. So this polyphone, I'll go down in a minute uh, and play it to you. Um, it, it, does, it does work, but as you can see, the floor is there and the polyphone is here. So it sort of floats in midair. And what happens is the sound all sort of dissipates. So in the church, it is pretty much completely inaudible. And so we're going to try and move it somewhere more advantageous, possibly up in the gallery uh, somewhere on the floor, 
so we'll get so a little bit more sound out of it, so it'll be more effective than it is at present. We will also be extending this eight foot, uh, another 12 pipes to bring it up to four foot, um, which again will further brighten the pedal up, and it will make tuning this department easy because tuning this mixture is difficult because the nearest clear sounding principle is all the way over there, so it's very difficult for the tuners to uh, tune adequately. Um, we will also be adding, um, I had hoped to put a 32 foot reed in, again plenty of space up against this wall to put the extra 12 pipes in, but unfortunately these things cost money uh, and we don't have the money to do that, but what we will be doing is uh, rigging up a Compton style harmonics of 32, um, which is a sort of fake 32 foot reed effect which Compton pioneered, it was another one of his brilliant ideas. Um, so we'll be rigging that up once we've got solid state, it'll be much easier. Now I'm just going to go down the ladder now uh, and hopefully we can hear the polyphone up close. So we'll go down, oops, I it fall over, and we'll go down to the floor of the pedal department. Here we go, so we're now on the floor, the random chair in the corner. So you can see, I can just about fit, I'm not quite six foot, but there you are, you can see on the floor, so all the pipe work sits above. So hopefully, if this is still working, this little unit here, I can, there we go. So I don't know if my, my little phone speaker will pick that up, but that is a polyphone, so it's quite effective in here, so all the sound is coming here. So it's not it's 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 functioning here. But in the church that is uh, just, it's just inaudible. So we 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 need to move it to no you could, I don't know if the phone will pick that up that rumbling but uh, it is definitely working but as I say it's just in the wrong place so hopefully we're going to move this um, we thought about putting it on the floor in here, but as you can see, the structure is held up, but I don't think you would fit it in without having to completely rebuild the whole thing, which is not what we want to do. Um, so there we have it. So the pedal is, is going to see some changes, um, but ultimately I think they will improve this organ immeasurably.